Welcome to Hornbill TV Prime at 9. I'm Muamla and now news and details. The agreement between Russia and Ukraine on evacuating civilians from the cities of Mariupol and Volnovaka was halted after Kyiv accused Moscow of violating the local ceasefire agreement and resuming its attacks on residential areas. Accusing Moscow of breaking a ceasefire, the officials said that the city is still surrounded by the Russian troops while its shelling is still going on in the city areas. A seven-hour ceasefire was announced for the Mariupol and Volnovaka cities of Ukraine to set up humanitarian corridors for the evacuation of civilians and delivery of food and medicines. Earlier, the advisor to Ukrainian President Mykhailo Podolyak had informed that humanitarian evacuation corridors are being prepared for opening in Mariupol and Volnovaka. This comes as the Russian Defense Ministry declared a ceasefire for the evacuation of civilians in Mariupol and Volnovaka adding that the corridors and evacuation routes had been agreed upon the Ukraine with Ukraine. Moscow has seized two key cities in its 10-day-long invasion, Burdyansk and Kherson on Ukraine's southern Black Sea coast. Meanwhile, raising concerns over the Indian students stranded in Sumi, India on Saturday said that it has urged Russian and Ukrainian governments through multiple channels for an immediate ceasefire to create a safe corridor for our students. Reportedly, 20,000 Indians have left Ukraine since MES first travel advisory was issued. 16 flights have been scheduled for the next 24 hours, including Indian Air Force's C-17 aircraft to bring back stranded Indians. Russia on Saturday declared ceasefire in two war-hit Ukraine cities, including the strategic port city of Mariupol to open humanitarian corridors for civilians. Today, March 5 from 10 a.m. Moscow time, the Russian side declares a regime of silence and opens humanitarian corridors for the exit of civilians from Mariupol and Volnovaka. News agency AFP quoted the defense ministry as saying, while the residents have been told to leave the cities, there is no confirmation, however, on how long the evacuation process will continue. The Kremlin has cut electricity, food, water, heating and transportation in Mariupol. Local administration had said earlier on Saturday, with temperatures plummeting, adding that the city was blockaded. For now, we are looking for solutions to humanitarian problems and all possible ways to get Mariupol out of the blockade. Mayor Vadim Bochenko was quoted as saying by news agency AFP. In its latest updates, the DUK Defense Ministry that has been closely attacking the movement of Russia troops has said that Moscow seems to be advancing towards the southern port city of Moykolaiv. A day after the attack on Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant said to be the Europe's largest, Moscow is eyeing its next target. Troops are headed towards the usual usual Kranz nuclear plant, the second largest in Ukraine, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas Greenfield told the U.N. Security Council on Friday. <coughs> Two people were killed in separate incidents of poll-related violence as voting is underway in the last phase of polling in Manipur. The first incident took place in Tobal district and the second in Senapati district. According to data put out by the chief electoral officer, Manipur voter turnout recorded till 3 p.m. was 67.77%, Chandal recorded 70.30%, Jiribam recorded 67.80%, Tobal recorded 67.17%, Senapati 74.02%, Tamenglong 57.81% and Nukul 67.99%. The electoral fate of 92 candidates in 22 constituencies across six districts will be decided in this phase of voting. A total of 8.38 lakh voters are eligible to cast their votes in the districts of Tobal, Chandal, Ukrul, Senapati, Tamenglong and Jiribam in this phase. Chief Electoral Officer Rajesh Agrawal said, Repol in some areas of Churanjampur, Kangkupokpi and Imphal East districts where EVMs were damaged. But miscreants during the first phase of voting on February 28 also took place on Saturday. The counting of votes will be held on March 10.
Senior Congress leader Jairam Ramesh on Saturday said that he will file a petition in the Supreme Court challenging the Election Commission decision which held that the payment of funds by the Bharatiya Janata Party led Manipur government to the ban militant groups under suspension of operation didn't violate the model code of conduct. On Friday, the Congress party accused the PJP government in Manipur of taking help from banned militant organizations for the second phase of the state elections by releasing funds in two installments for the banned outfit, Cookie National Organization. The opposition party alleged that these funds were not released for a long time but now it has been done to influence the polls. The Congress further alleged that the banned Cookie Organization had started intimidating voters to support the PJP. Lotha Officers Association held its general conference today under the theme Together We Work Towards Common Good at Town Tea Hall in Wokha. Speaking as a guest of honor at the program, Deputy Chief Minister Y. Peton said, Lothas are one among various pioneers that has recorded in various formations of a recognized social platform in the state. Therefore, he challenged the officers to uphold the history created by the elders citing that currently Lotha community has 550 officers. He exhorted all the Lotha officers to uphold integrity through unity and continue to be an instrument of change particularly in the Lotha society and Naga in general, setting that lack of unity is the mechanism for a downfall of society be it in religion or in any organization. Patton called upon the officers to come together and have a cordial relationship with a lot of elected legislators. He also told them to leave aside political, social and religious differences and fight for the social issues in the society. <laughs> Advisor of Horticulture and Border Affairs Matung Yantan, who also spoke at the program, said laws have become lawless and the state is becoming a land of lawless for people don't follow the system. He called upon all Lotha officers to work diligently and served as good ambassadors for the people. He said that government servants are the icons of the people that represent the government and its department to which he urged them to live an exemplary life. Advisor IT and Communications, Science and Technology and NRE, Molo Mokugon and MLA Dr. Chumben Muri, who also spoke at the program, called for unity among the Lothas. This is the truth. I am appealing to their conscience. I am appealing to their uh, Christianity or Christian faith. Mm. Constitution, which is the type of so, but only type of so, as an Oyoja, for the Kapoteri, or Kiki, or Acha. Oyota, Sana, or Nana, Tudasi, Puna, Rojo, the Dina, ideas, which are sharing, so that they are the Yuana, but you matter of an internet, and under the Tadu, the Chumana, don't you watch the other, and under she is Sadu. 
Clad in traditional attire, thousands of Koyma village residents celebrated Ki Kihimia Sikrini today at Kihimia Ground, Zekezo in Koyma. Sikrini is a festival of purification and sanctification celebrated by the Angami Nagas. The festival was organized by the Kohima Village Youth Organization along with Kelpili with the aim to promote and preserve the Naga cultural heritage. <laughs> Exhorting the gatherings, MLA Kriu Lizitsu said, Sikrini festival is to purify oneself and to seek divine blessings for prosperity and good health. He encouraged the community to continue to live in peace and harmony. Sikrini greetings was delivered by Hilivio Solo, Chairman Kohima Village Council. Various cultural competitions and events marked the festival. All of us as residents of the Kohima capital town, we speak different dialects. We belong to different cultures and religions. We belong. Uh, we follow different uh, cultures and religions. We belong to different tribes and castes. But to me, the message of this second festival is common for all: to purify oneself and to seek divine blessings for prosperity and good health for the days ahead. I wish all of us will carry back those blessings back to our places so that we can continue to live in peace and harmony. I once again welcome you all and wish you all a happy Sabini. Five people, including a Bangladeshi national, were arrested in Western Assam for their suspected links with a jihadi group based in the adjoining country. And this group is believed to be affiliated to the Al Qaeda in Indian subcontinent. Director General of Police Bhaskar Joyti Mahanta said on Saturday. The Assam Police Chief said that, based on an intelligence report, Barpeta Police apprehended five people on Friday night from Holi, Barpeta, and Kalkajia police stations areas for the links with jihadi outfit based out of Bangladesh having affiliation to AQs. Incriminating documents and electronic devices were recovered from their possession. Zuakali Pazon Bioptic Homer Special Branch Bikekhaha Hom Police or Aru Borpeta Police or Zukto Vizanot पांच जन व्यक्ति ग्रेप्टर को रहा हुए से ये पांच जन व्यक्ति अरे ढोरा हुए से बिके के खाओली बोर्पेटारो कोलगेसिया पुलिस स्टेशन एरिया पर आ आरु त्यान लोगों बांग्लादेश और अलकायदा इन इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट और लोगों प्रत्यक्ष भावे जोड़ी तो Ansarul Islamor, Pratakha Tehaluk Kormi, Aru Zehadi. Agote Tehaluk, Al-Qaeda, Tehaluk Arlogot Hamprikto, Eta Organization, Ansarul Bangla Team Buli Kwa Hisile. Aru Pisole Etu Ansarul Islam Buli Kwa Hul, Aru Tehaluk, Al-Qaeda in Indian Subcontinent. Tehaluk Arlogot Pratakha Bhabhe, Haha Jogi, हंगाथन भी हिसाब है पॉलीगोनी तो हो या ही से जुआ कल नगालैंड चिल्ड्रेन्स होम कमेमोरेटेड इट्स 58 ईयर एट इट्स प्रीमिसेस इन डिबुपार चुम्बकीडी माउंट मार्च 5 विथ मिनिस्टर ऑफ पीएचडी जेकब जिमोमी ग्रेसिंग डी 
Occasion as chief guest, Jumomi, while addressing the gathering, said that the institution, which consists of the orphanage and the school, is not only providing basic necessities, but also providing education to the children, which will help them in the future, saying that only few schools in the state have such a responsibility to of providing shelter and food. The minister felt that celebrating 50 years is a milestone in the history of the institution and its family. Let's have a look at the details with our reporter Esther. This is a very unique institution with the blessings from the Almighty and the well-wishers. And I can assure you that as we prepare our children who are enrolled in this school, as said earlier, not only you are providing shelter, food, and basic amenities to them, but you are also preparing them, giving them education so that they grow in full capacity and face the challenges in life that they may confront as they grow up. The youth today is the greatest strength of a country and so is the state of Nagaland. We have a high percentage of youth force. We are preparing them to face the challenges of the modern day society so that they become self-reliant. But I, our primary focus is that we impart to them good education because education will be our greatest asset, their greatest asset as they grow up. As you can see, the world is scientifically moving ahead. Sharp aged technology. Every day there is upgradation in the usage of technology, which you all are aware as children and as parents. And therefore, this is one area we have to focus. We cannot ignore the basic subjects. I want to contribute from the Local Area Development Fund for the infrastructural development of this institution. So I am going to, I have earmarked rupees 5 lakhs from the State Local Area Development Fund for Nagaland Children's Home School. Being a layman, he saw the fear the soil that already ripe, fully ripe. So he gave Jesus the people of Konya people who never knew. And from there, his first son was born. And he named his son Senkap. It means, Senkap means the, from the Konya language. Today, his son, his daughter, his daughter, his granddaughter become the director of this school. We're here with the chairman of the Nagaland Children's Home in Dipupar, uh, Mr. S.K. Kenye. 
And uh, sir, we want to know, uh, 50 years it has uh, been and then the school. So which came first, the school or the orphanage, sir? Actually, in the same year. Hmm. Because initially we started at uh, an orphan home, but a home without education become a problem. So side by side, the school also immediately introduced along with the home to give uh, basic education hmm, to the children. Uh, what would be the uh, in what matter would you be using the, uh, utilizing the money for? Actually, just now I have told the minister it's a God gift that uh, uh, one because the most important thing we require now is upgradation of the infrastructure. Students are there because uh, it's near here and it's the middle of the village. And the Hoba, you know, is one of the next to Barabosti. I think the Hoba is one of the biggest village, so the student intake is there. But when we cannot, when we take more students, then expansion of the classrooms, infrastructure become a must. So last time we had a serious discussion about the matter. But to organize Nantan Lagos is a big issue. And we never discuss the matter with him also because uh, he has gracefully come to dress so we don't to bring out any of our problem also. But uh, God has spoken to him that uh, he has uh, committed, the, uh, you know, uh, for the infrastructure requirement, we are very happy about it. Yeah. And sir, uh, how many students are there altogether and uh, approximately what's the percentage of students that are orphans? You see, we have about 500 students and as of now, about 80, 80 are orphans. So this 80, you see, uh, are free of tuition, free of uh, fooding, uh, lodging. Uh, but somehow, since we have a general student about 500, that way we realize fees from them, but comparatively we find that ours is the cheapest, the lowest uh, fee structure in Dimapur. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was uh, the chairman of Nagaland's Children's Home, SK Kenye, who just told us that uh, out of 500 students, 80 are orphans and are studying here. And uh, even outside, uh, general students are also allowed to study at the school over here. This was the 50th year celebration of uh, the Nagaland Children's Home. And uh, Mr. Jacob Zimomi, the Minister of PhD, also graced the occasion as chief guest. Reporter Esther with camera person Wong for Hornbill TV. Washoko is traditional Japanese cooking competition which has been attracting chefs from all over the world for the different delicacies. Cooking method, ingredients and beautiful presentation and international cooking competition Washoko World Challenge was recently organized via an online platform Six finalists from countries like USA, United Kingdom, Brazil were nominated for cooking creative Washoko dishes. This got the opportunity to learn authentic Washoko cooking from Japanese chefs. This is all for now. Keep watching Humble TV.